Hello there, this is Fredo Victor. In this video series, I present to you a time lapse of my sculpting process along with my thoughts for this new project I'm working on. The basic concept behind this creation is about the spiritual enlightenment of man. However, in this case, I believe I'd be able to symbolically represent that idea better by choosing a child as the main subject instead of a fully grown man. A child who is innocent, joyful, and full of life. The model you are seeing here is an work it's an old work of mine which I decided to resculpt and make improvements upon. So we transform to something close to my concept. So yeah, it's okay to recycle good-ish old models. So you won't have to start from scratch all the time. In this way, you get to save time. And it's also a good challenge or exercise on how you could bring a fresh take or a new life Two year old works. Also, I think revising an old model in this project is very appropriate, like it's a good metaphor of how we individuals go through a certain kind of uh, transformation, you know, that allows us to progress in life or achieve some kind of uh, spiritual enlightenment or realization in life. Anyways, Going back to our main topic, which is sculpting, I'm initially working with symmetry mode on and I try to move and reshape things around as much as I can during this phase. In this case, I'm just trying to make a default smile and uh, opening up the lips a bit while being mindful of the shape I want to portray for this kid's smile. You will notice that, uh, that I look at my model at different angles many times. Uh, this helps me in evaluating my work with respect to my reference. And also this helps me to determine which changes I still should make on my model. To put it simply, I'm trying to feel my model as I look at it. Mm, at this point, I'm just trying to sketch in some lines dots or landmarks for the facial expression it allows me to understand better how i would be sculpting that area in order to bring out a joyful and innocent look on this character this sketch lines i'm doing is like another layer of a uh, visual guidelines for me Now, seeing closely the side view, for the first time I believe, I realized that there's something off with the lips. So again, it's really, really important to look at your model from all angles. I guess I can never stress that enough. At this stage, I'm adding subtle forms on the cheeks to complement uh, the smiling lips carefully adding some volume very very lightly oh, and yes I am moving the ears as I go as well and I believe I have turned off the symmetry mode at this point Oh yeah, 
please care to like this video and subscribe and click the bell icon so you get updates to my future content. Thanks. And going back to the topic of symmetry. Um, understand that it can only take you as far when scoping the face. If you stay too long on it, you end up uh, going around in circles, trying to correct things, but in the end, your work will still look lifeless, even though you have observed closely the basic rules of proportions and uh, facial structure. Um, so, as digital artists, we must develop this instinct or ability to know when to turn off symmetry mode and start really bringing more life and character to your model. When working on the eyes, I would normally sculpt some forms on one side and after a while I would uh, jump on the other eye while the sculpting touches I made from the other eye are still fresh on my mind. In that way I can sculpt it almost in the same way, thereby making both eyes having the same feel to them. Here you see me zoom in and uh, zoom out a lot. It's the same idea. It helps me see if the forms I'm sculpting are working well with the overall model. Plus it prevents me from adding too much detail in one area and forgetting the other parts of my model, which is never a good practice at all. like to make an important note here don't forget to look at your model from below this is kind of neglected most of the time especially by beginners since the front view can be in a way really deceiving but when you look from below you will see that your forms are totally off I'm really trying to define the lips at this point so that there's like a form difference between the lips and the skin next to it and uh, you know because I don't have color information here there's nothing really to separate it but the forms I'm trying to dig in there so that it would catch more shadows. At this point, I really have not changed the angle of the light. So it's not to confuse me that much.
All right, that part's still looking flat. Gotta work on it. There. But I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm still gonna change it later on along the, along the way. I'm back on the ice and it's a good idea as well to you know jump from one area to another so as to keep everything fresh and fluid start with the hair um, when sculpting this kind of hairstyle I just I would normally draw almost randomly on my figure provided that I have constructed a basic shape for the hair and in my mind I have a general idea of how the hair would flow if you notice I'm basically just sketching or sculpting a lot of letter C curves and a bit of letter S curves and combining them together to make an illusion of hair clumps in the end. So I think I'm using Damon Standard here to pull out the forms and then I, I use and I use the same brush to dig in and define the shapes. Basically, I'm more careful when doing uh, this part near the ears, the sideburns, and the hair that touches the, the ears. Sometimes I would need to pull out the hair to extend it. I put it down just to, so 
so that it would touch the ears quite a bit. And at this point I'm trying to define how the hair blends in into the nape, back of the neck. So sometimes I would deliberately cut in into the hair. Alright, see now I'm just really moving the hair clumps. And I'm trying to connect those hairs among each other. You don't want them to look disconnected or as if one hair clump is like floating or suddenly um, shoots out from the hair. Basically, when I'm trying to, to sculpt this uh, this way, I am my hands are switching from the move and the dim standard brush. We're back on the face sculpting here. I'm just trying to move the cheeks, I'm trying to define more the smile, I'm trying to correct the forms, I'm trying to look at all angles. And my technique is usually I would um, I try to exaggerate or to make a very noticeable change in the forms and then I would go back and smooth it out that way it would become more subtle basically I'm thinking it's there but it's not there the forms, the changes are there but it's not that obvious but you could somehow feel it and that's what I basically mean when I say it's there but it's not there
I believe I was trying to add some irregularities on the lips here in the lower lip so that it will become more alive um, what I do is I look at the reference very quickly try to pick up something try to feel it and then I'll try to implement it on the canvas or in the studio model So there I tried to deepen the line there so that it would catch more shadow. there once I quickly added those forms I smoothed them out and whatever's left from the smoothing will be the foundation or the first layer of the wrinkles on the eye. process of sculpting wrinkles on the right eye mm, and while checking every now and then my reference 
and to try to add more of the important details from the reference into my model. And then I'm trying, I tried to add some muscle there, the mass it there. Very, very subtle though. So I would add some forms and then I'm going to smooth it out. should be very subtle. Trying to add in and define more the zygomatic arch. And I'm trying to fix the ears here so that it will be more in proportion to the overall face. We are almost at the end of this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will try to reply as soon as I can. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you for your support and see you in part 2.